This is the Create Your Own Life Show, where we interview people that are world-class performers, from Super Bowl champions to New York Times bestsellers to billionaires. We figure out what makes them tick and unpack it for you to do the same. I'm Jeremy Ryan Slate, and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we help you to create your own life. What is up, everybody? Jeremy here. It is Wednesday, the 2nd of December, 2020, and this is the Create Your Own Life show. We have a little bit of a different episode in store for you guys today, which I'm going to get into in just a second. Um, but I hope you guys have had an amazing, um, I guess, first 11 months of the year. Welcome to December. And I know there's a lot of butt left to kick that we can still do in the month of December. So I hope you guys figure out what that goal is you can accomplish this month, what that thing is you can get done this month to push yourself over the top because there's still another 30 days to create a ton of success this month. And I know you can do it. So today's episode is a little bit of a different one. We have John Spagnola with us. He's a coalition builder and also a lobbyist, uh, but not in the way that you guys think of traditional lobbying. Like I think you think of lobbyists, you're like, oh my gosh, they work for Big Pharma or they work for tech or whatever, and they get in front of um, politicians. So John's a little bit different. And the issue that he's handling is very close to my heart because we've had a lot of uh, prior military on the show. We've had generals. We've had lots of incredible people on the show. And, you know, really it's a travesty what's been going on with our military and, and amount, the amount of suicides that has been happening. And John's going to get it a little bit more into those numbers in this episode, but it's something that's very close to my heart and very important. So we're going to take a look at how, as an independent lobbyist, John's been able to make a really, really big impact in this world and make a lot of things happen. So we're going to talk about his story, why that matters to him. We're going to be talking about you know, really what he's doing and helping to write bills, helping to get in front of politicians and how he's trying to change, um, you know, really how our military is treated um, when, they're, when they're really struggling with their mental health. And I think this is a conversation that needs to be had. I think this is kind of the first step to having it. And John's also going to talk about a really big win that he had this year with a bill that he wrote that the president actually signed into law. So this is a really, really great episode. Um, as I said, this is we try to stay non-political on this show. So this isn't really a political statement. It's more about um, you know just how we have to take care of our military. You know what I mean? They they give their lives for us. They uh, they they really put it all on the line, and we we need to take care of them in the right way. And it's it's just not okay that the number of suicides that has been happening have been happening. So we're going to really take a look at that mental health issue today with John Spagnola. I just want to remind you guys quickly, though, if you're watching this on YouTube, down on the bottom, you're going to see a subscribe button. Hit that. If you're listening to this on the podcast version, um, whether it's an Apple podcast, Spotify, or wherever else you listen, make sure you hit the subscribe button in your app so that you get a new episode of the show delivered to your device every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and give yourself an opportunity to learn from some of the amazing people we have on the show. Um, one more announcement, I guess, before we jump into it, and that is that we have one more day left on the pre-launch for my new book, Extraordinary, which is based on the six principles we've learned from a lot of the incredible guests on this show. Um, I would just love your support on that, so you can do that by going over to jeremyryanslate.com slash extraordinary and grabbing your copy today, Um, and the book will be coming out next year, and we're super, super excited for that. All right, everyone, let's get into this episode with John Spagnola. Hey everybody, Jeremy here, Uh, and as you all know by some of the interviews we've done on this show, um, you know, our military really matters to me, and that's why I'm excited about today's episode, because we're going to talk about um, a lot of what, um, you know, our military is going through on an individual level, and, you know, how the real suicide problem is huge and really needs to be addressed in a different way than it's been, and our guest today is John Spagnola. John, thanks for hanging out with me today, my friend. Hey, my pleasure, Jeremy. Appreciate the work you do and all the different folks you have on. Absolutely. And we were actually connected uh, by our mutual friend, uh, Joe Yazbak. So I got to give Joe a shout out for uh, connecting us because he is kind of the ultimate at that. And uh, and what you do, John, you're, you consider yourself to be um, a lobbyist and a coalition builder. So just for people that haven't really um, you know, heard of you before, could you just tell us a little bit of it about who you are and what you do? Sure. Yeah, I'm, a, as you said, a coalition builder. Let me clarify what that is. Yeah. Basically, someone, I work in Washington, D.C. I work with the Congress. 
I work with the what they call the veteran service organizations because I focus on veterans. And that's groups you might have heard of, like the American Legion, VFW, AMVETS, Gold Star Wives, and what have you. Um, and what I do is I'm concerned about veteran health in particular. Mm. Um, because, matter of fact, there was a, a report that just came out that showed that veterans' uh, suicides actually ticked up this past month based on the whole last year. So that's not good news. What, what um, was that number, John? Because I know the last number I could find was from 2017. It was like, um, I, I believe it was somewhere around 6,100 uh, total for, for, for 2017. But what I guess what's that more current statistic? You know, it ticked up in decibels. Uh, decibels. Mm. So it was a small amount. But the point was it didn't go down sure. with all the you know monies that we're spending and all the studies and so on. It's still going up to any degree. It's, you know, is really not okay. So anyways, I, I, what I do is I work with these other national organizations. I also work with the Congress. I work with the Senate, uh, the House, of course, and the White House is, uh, on occasion as well. And my focus is, again, turn, to turn around the suicides in particular. But I'm also interested in um, the health of veterans. So mm -hmm. I help write legislation, uh, uh, work on regulations, um, and, um, you know, unlike most lobbyists that are hired guns by corporations and they're told exactly what to do and how to do it, uh, whether they believe in it or not, I don't I won't do that. Um, I work uh, quite quite uniquely. I work on private donations, small donations from people that like my work and mm -hmm. that allows me to pick and choose uh and keep my personal integrity intact, which is, means a lot to me. I can sleep at night, and uh, so I consider myself a, one of the good lobbyists. I, I guess that, that, that it's funny because you, you hit two things I wanted to ask you about. And I guess the first being like, why do a lot of lobbyists get a bad name? Because we keep hearing about, oh gosh, the guy's a lobbyist or something like that. Is is kind of one half of it, and then the other half is you mentioned being, um, you know, independently funded so that you can make kind of the greatest good decisions versus lobbyists that kind of have a vested interest. I guess kind of, could you could you kind of tackle those two for us real quick? Um, well, the idea of the independent funding is unique. Like I said, for instance, in Washington, D.C. alone, there are about 1,200 pharmaceutical lobbyists. Wow. Are um, they the largest, by the way? It seems like they would be. Yeah, they are uh, at least one of them, if not the largest. They probably are the largest. Uh, just to give you a perspective, uh, in Congress, we have 435 uh, congressmen in the House, and we have 100 senators. So combined, it's 535 legislators. Um, we're talking 1,200 pharmaceutical lobbyists, and that's not counting the psychiatric lobbyists, the medical lobbyists, the nursing lobbyists. It's, uh, they've got some amazing power and influence uh, up there, which I believe is a factor of why, um, you know, not enough is being done to turn around the, the, the health situations of our veterans. Mm. So I, I guess then looking at it, just because I'm sure most people aren't quite sure, like they've heard the term before, you know, they hear in the news, like to be a lobbyist, I guess, what, what does a lobbyist do in relation to, you know, we mentioned the, the, the 535 representatives from both the House and Senate. So I guess, what does a lobbyist do with these individuals? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I guess it depends on the lobbyist and what they're being paid to do. But uh, what they really are is a representative of that corporation. And mm -hmm. they develop relationships with congressmen, senators, White House, and they're basically paid to play, which means that the corporations fund them to, to get a bill passed or to get uh, uh, a regulation enforced or some other activity. And, um, you know, so they really act on behalf of whoever is paying them in that no mm -hmm. one is paying me uh, as a corporation. That allows me to strategize more independently, keep in mind uh, the greatest good and doing what's best for the veterans. And, um, you know, I just love the work. I'm very passionate about it. And as a result, um, I have found three areas that I think um, if we can hone in on these, this could really change the situation on our veterans' health. Mm -hmm. One of them 
is the medications themselves. Um, now, obviously, some medications are good and very much needed. Mm -hmm. However, um, I work, for instance, with the CEO of the Navy SEAL Foundation, and she uh, told me she has one veteran on 40 medications at once. Now, wow. yeah, that's, uh, and I've just worked with a congressman who got reelected down here. He has a veteran on 32 at once. It's not uncommon to find 10 to 20 at once. And so like people even consider like how many of those drugs are like canceling each other out or like, you, you know, you know what I mean? To be on that many yeah. things at the same time. Well, you're exactly right because the interactions have never been tested. There's no studies. Uh, what it comes down to, unfortunately, is using uh, veterans and our active military as human guinea pigs to some degree because there's a mm. lot of guessing. And, uh, and, and what they're doing is they're treating symptoms, not the real causes, that adds a whole other level of confusion and uncertainty uh, so that things, as far as I see, the statistics don't improve, right? Um, so it's, it's concerning because the FDA has already come out and done studies, this was in the early 90s, that demonstrated medications such as antidepressants, antipsychotics, stimulants, benzodiazepines and what have you um, need and require a black box warning, which means the, they are labeled with the highest risk possible. And they put those on the drugs that they are now giving to our veterans and to our active military as well. So my concern is, one, first of all, I look at Hippocratic Oath and I say, first, do no harm. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we should be doing is looking at what can we do to alleviate the situation that has least risk, least danger. And to me, you know, we should look at the complementary uh, realm, potentially exercise therapy, which veterans love. Uh, canine therapy, you know, they love to play with animals and of course horses. Uh, those are very therapeutic. As uh, art therapy, music therapy, there's all these very effective methods that are available. Well, not everywhere, but they need to be more available mm -hmm. and they have great results. So you would, I think if you gave the veteran a choice and he knew about those, I personally think he would say, you know, I'd like to start with that at least and see how I do with that. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, it's usually after the medications and the problems that they have physically and mentally that they finally uh, find out about some of the complementary medicine that I just mentioned. So it's a bit sure. of a wrong sequence, right? So the medications are a big concern. Um, I guess I'm happy to report that uh, in light of all the pharmaceutical lobbyists in Washington, I worked on uh, some legislation. Uh, John, the John Hannon Act is a short term, S-785. It's a large bill. But in the bill, I helped write a section that causes an investigation by the National Academy of Sciences. Mm -hmm. And what, what they are to look at is the connection between veteran suicides, benzodiazepines like Xanax and what have you, and um, opioids. And that should be starting up shortly, but it's the first ever study that I know of, of an investigation into uh, something related to a psychiatric drug like that. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, that just was signed by the president, oh, maybe a month and a half ago, into law. <clears throat> so that's one thing to move in the right direction. Um, the second area that I think is real important to address is the area of informed consent. Mm -hmm. Veterans, now there's a, what they call a Veteran at, um, Health Administration Handbook. It's basically the guide that must be followed when you're in the VA, the Veteran Administration. In the, the Veteran Health Administration Handbook, it mandates that the veterans are told the side effects of the medications before they prescribe them, which makes common sense to me and Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Um, they're also uh, instructed and mandated to provide a list of the alternative treatments that are available. So in a language, and this is important, that a veteran understands. So you can't throw an insert at a, you know, from a drug 
for instance, to a veteran and say, oh, he has informed consent. No, as a matter of fact, it's recommended that the veteran repeat back to you what he understands as a doctor so, uh, so that you can, as a doctor, say, okay, he really got what I'm saying. It didn't mm -hmm. go in one ear and out the other because he's nervous. He's rushed. He's, you know, who knows what he's got going on at home, right? Sure. So it's real important that they get informed consent. Unfortunately, in the handbook, it labels medications as low risk. And there's the problem. And who and decides that? Who decides that a medication is low risk? The VA, they have an informed consent division. I've actually spoken to the top doctor in that division on a conference call with a psychologist, a, v a VSO, a JAG attorney, because we were trying to show him that this needs to get adjusted and corrected. And they were unwilling to make any changes, unfortunately, right? Mm -hmm. But the idea is that this is in the handbook. You have things in the handbook like acupuncture, right? I, I, I should ask you, how many people do you know have died of acupuncture? I don't know anyone that has. <laughs> but, you know, and, and neither do I. Yet, yeah, that requires written or signatory mm -hmm. informed consent, right? So my point is that since black box warning drugs like the stimulants, antidepressants, neuroleptics, so on, uh, have the highest risk label on them, they should require written or signatory informed consent because, you know, one, it would help the veterans understand the side effects, and two, it would help the veterans understand he, he has options. And, and mm -hmm. I should add, the VA, not the VA, actually the, uh, the, the Government Accountability Office, it's one of the GAOs, mm -hmm. uh, did a study last year, which I helped prompt with a congressman, and the upshot of that study was there's no evidence by the VA that they have, that they've ever provided these alternative treatments to the veterans. Wow. And that's, that's pretty shocking, but mm -hmm. one can locate that study. So that's the, that's the issue of informed consent, and why it's so crucial, because that, I think alone, that education, it's th that small change that we can make. By the way, I have a draft bill on that right now to change that. Wow. Um, that bill is supported by the American Legion, by the Association of the United States Navy, uh, by AMVETS, uh, American Veterans, that's the fourth largest veterans group, mm -hmm. um, and also by Vietnam Veterans of America. Um, I, there's there's uh, one, the Special Operations Association of America is supporting it as well, and um, veteran, the Military Veteran Advocacy, that they did a lot with veterans on blue water situation that they were very successful. That's Agent Orange that was in the water that mm -hmm. now um, these veterans can now get benefits based on what this organization did. The founder of that organization is John Wells, who's brilliant. So um, that gives you a little bit of an idea of if we can get this bill mm -hmm. passed, I think personally, it would cut suicides in half or more. Um, and if you go to a congressional hearing, which I must do and do, sometimes it's three hours and it's on suicides, right? And so, you know, what's really odd is you will rarely hear medica medications even brought up when they're trying to find a solution to, mm -hmm. you know, veteran suicides. Yeah. So... That's, you know, that's what it is. And I just wanted to make you aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wanted to give you a third point, if I, if I could. Well, let I me, let me, let me, uh, I guess, kind of, kind of build on those couple of things before we get to the third one here for a sec, because you made some really, sure. really good key points there. Because um, sure. when we were kind of talking about your, your first point there, John, you mentioned, um, you know, working out and just getting active and stuff like that and how important that is and why it's not addressed enough. Um, our audience will remember um, earlier this year, we had uh, Ian Smith on the show, who's the the co the co owner of Attila's Gym here in New Jersey. And one of the mm -hmm. things that he had mentioned um, here is 
with, you know, gyms getting shut down and a lot of stuff like that, you know, people aren't able to, you know, former military aren't able to get their workouts and stuff in. And that really helps to center a lot of people just because they're active and they're getting their energy out. So I think like the ability to do that is, is super, super important. And, and also at the same time, um, you were mentioning, um, another thing there, um, about like not giving other, other therapies an idea, like, like in terms of like, um, why aren't we getting the core, the root cause of things? Like, why aren't we working more with like functional medicine doctors and stuff like that? Like why, why aren't options like that ever on the table, John? I'm, I'm curious. Well, you're transitioning to my third point. <laughs> okay. Go for it. Beautiful <laughs> <laughs> transition actually. Um, what's not being done. We talked about the, the application or the, yeah in application of the Hippocratic Oath and first do no harm, right? Well, there's another um, procedure that's expected of medical doctors that unfortunately is not being used. And I urge veterans in particular, actually all, all Americans, but veterans in particular to ask for a differential diagnosis. And what that means, a doctor is supposed to first make a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Now, typically, unfortunately, and this is a whole nother show, but they could base a, diagnos a diagnosis off symptoms. Mm -hmm. And that goes into uh, a, a large book called the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, where you have a lot of symptoms that have labels. Mm -hmm. um, that, are, that labeling symptoms doesn't change them from being symptoms, right? Mm -hmm. What we need to do is we need to um, eliminate all potential causes before the doctor gives you an accurate, truthful, scientific diagnosis. And that's what a differential diagnosis means. He eliminates all the potential causes first, right? Mm. So, it's so important. Now, just to give you an idea, uh, the underlying physical causes, actually, even per... Uh, the, the British Medical Journal, I have a study where it says you must eliminate these physical causes first prior to moving on and saying something like schizophrenia is an actual disease because schizophrenia, along with every other mental disease, including PTSD and so on, the, the, um, the, both of those are like ones that kind of seem to be catch-alls though, aren't they? Like they, that a lot of things are. qualify as those? You're, you hit it on the head. Those are catch-alls, exactly. And um, and it's unfortunate. I know there's benefits when you have that label, but it doesn't help you get any better if sure. they don't look for the physical causes because the physical causes almost always cause the mental phenomena. And this is what's missed. I'll give you some examples. And nutritional deficiencies can cause psychosis, they can cause mm -hmm. anxiety, they can cause depression, they can cause not being able to sleep, all the things that veterans and, and other uh, public are experiencing, right? Mm -hmm. and, and but I, I know for myself, like I've had, uh, I've had, you know, not as much energy as I typically have. And I've been working with, uh, with a functional doctor recently, and we found out I have a lot of heavy metals in my system. So we've been doing a big cleanse for heavy metals. And we don't realize a lot of these like physical symptoms, things that could be happening because actually something physically wrong with the body. Yeah, exactly. That's an excellent point. And mm -hmm. I'm glad you're having good results with that. Yeah, there's there's a, an author, Raymond Francis, wrote the book, Never Fear Cancer Again. And I, I urge you to read that and your, and your listeners to read it because he provides understandable information that's applicable. Mm -hmm. And it really gives a clarification for cancer. Um, one of the quotes in the book I want to read to you, it says, nutritional deficiency is the single most important cause of all disease. Now, that's a profound statement. Yeah. Uh, yet, it's sort of a commonsensical statement when you look at it, you know. Correct. What you're putting in, just like in a car, you put in low octane gas and it pings and you have problems and before you know it you need an, a new engine you know um so it, this there's an analogy there uh the next point as we just um mentioned is informed consent mm -hmm. if we can put in informed consent i'm sorry I, I switched over to another issue the second point actually is hormones uh, right. and the fact that 
if you have an imbalance of hormones, right, this can cause the same thing. It can cause, again, psychosis, neurosis, anxiety, depression, homicide, suicide. Um, you know, these uh, hormones are so essential that they're balanced. Mm -hmm. uh, and I work with a doctor um, uh, who is, uh, Mark Gordon is his name. He's a neuroendocrinologist. He's brilliant. He's turned around th over 300 cases of traumatic brain injury. By the way, he wrote the book called Traumatic Brain Injury. It's about, it's very thick. And he, he's really, he literally literally wrote the book on it, right? He wrote the book, and I'll tell you, it, you know, it, it takes some some uh, some ability to read it. But he's brilliant. He was even uh, asked to speak before the Surgeon General of the UK earlier this year, which he did. Mm -hmm. And now the UK Surgeon General wants him to put in a grant for um, his his to do a pilot program uh, in sure. in the UK for the active military there, right? Um, but the what's remarkable is he's turned around 300 cases of traumatic brain injury just by using hormones, wow. testing testing for them properly, and also applying them properly. It sounds like well, anyone should be able to do that. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's not been done to the degree it needs to be, right? He's also turned around 2,000 cases of traumatic brain injury in the civilian population. So, you know, he works with NFL and other, other players as well. But uh, I just wanted to add, traumatic brain injury is not always a giant traumatic experience. According to Dr. Gordon, it can also be the accumulation of very minor jolts shocks and even you know accidents like when you have a car accident and so on these can right. also over time accumulate and cause traumatic brain injury which will inhibit the blood flow to the brain and cause a multitude of uh, ailments well I, i've even lot, read a lot of research myself with looking at uh you know and this is a lot of research that's still in process but like even things like like als right like yes. it's it's you you look at a lot of and this isn't every time but you look at a lot of careers people have been in their football players their baseball players their rugby players like they've had a lot of traumatic impacts that are causing this like generation at the same time so like these these things do compound yeah they do and you brought up an excellent example um by the way some of these doctors have had results with dementia alzheimer's uh parkinson's and what have you um, these have underlying physical causes. They just need to be spotted, eliminated, and properly treated, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, so the third um, uh, area, and again, there's other areas like allergies and so on that can also uh, need to be exposed and, and uh, isolated. But sure. you brought up earlier chemical toxins. Chemical mm -hmm. toxins um, can create havoc in the body and in the mind and you know what's crazy about that john is like i know as well um there, there's a surprising number of like heavy metals and stuff that are in a lot of our favorite like fitness supplements which is surprising so like mm -hmm. you know and we're exposed to a lot more of this stuff than we actually realize you know especially in the military i can't even imagine because they're exposed to so many more things than the rest of us would deal with well you hit it on the head i mean the military has to put up with uh you know, oil wells burning, as you've heard of burn pits, where mm -hmm. it's hundreds of acres in the desert of trash. Mm -hmm. I mean, human feces, as well as uh, dead animals, and who knows what else is in there, and they burn it to the point where, you know, how bright the sun is in the Near East, the sky goes black, and all those wow. particles fall on the soldiers that inhale them. And they're trying to get it okayed right now to say, hey, we'd like to get benefits based on that causing us damage. And I believe veterans are, and the veteran service organizations are working hard on trying to get benefits for the veterans for that. But you're right. Um, also, the nutrition is not so great when you're out, you know, in the military. Your sleep sure. is and another, that's another one that builds your immune system. Sleep is, you know, can't be so great in the military when your life is on the line, you know. So they have a lot of you know, intersecting, if you will, different um, environmental concerns that cause and result in this mystery that will result in all these uh, undesirable symptoms, you know. But well, I want to oh, go ahead. 
Well, I was going to say, it's it's interesting here, because you've kind of covered, like, in these points, like, a lot of different things that we could be doing correctly, but we're not, right? Like, I, I was watching, uh, I think, t- uh, Tucker Carlson, maybe, like, a month ago, and he was talking about, um, he had, they'd actually gotten a post blocked on Facebook because they said something about Congress throwing money at the opioid crisis, thinking that just throwing money at it's going to fix it. And yeah. and it seems to be the, the operating procedure, though, that we just kind of throw money at a situation without, like, a real plan to kind of solve a lot of these things. So I guess, you know, you've been ha- helping to write a lot of this legislation. You've got one, you know, a, a bill passed recently, which was definitely a win. I guess, how do we kind of, you know, pile more wins on top of this, John, where we're actually helping our, our, our veterans to get some results here? Well, that's really the uh, $10,000 question, isn't it? <laughs> uh, the, yeah, no, what we need to do is to bring up awareness right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think is like what we're, what you're doing right now, and I have to compliment you on taking the time to bring up and not only expose, but enlighten, you know, you, you do this with people that have the information that can help others. Yeah. And that's what, that's what we're about to the degree we can help others. You know, we're, we're, we become valuable. Right. So, mm-hmm. We need to bring up awareness. Uh, we need more talks. I'm just uh, speaking with a, a veteran service organization about having some briefings, informal briefings in Congress mm. to congressional aides, because those, those are the people that bring the issues to the congressman's attention. And to bring up complementary medicine, the medications, informed consent, um, some of the uh, underlying physical problems, because if they're educated, they're the ones that will create the legislation to help turn the situation. So that's one of my main focuses is to get that accomplished. Certainly shows like yours that go to thousands and thousands of people, of course, we'll get it out to the broad public and we need that expanded uh, mm-hmm. in a big way as well. Uh, we also need more legislation and, um, you know, we need obviously always need more support to get anything done. Um, because I'm, well, we're up against companies that have a lot literally of money. They pay billions of dollars just in liabilities or losses in court as the cost of business, and mm-hmm. um, that's you know that's 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 life here. And they the they play some they pay some pretty fi- uh, sizable fines and don't even bat an eye. <laughs> exactly, exactly, because they make such. I mean, what was it? AstraZeneca made. Uh, about four million dollars, you know, on uh, just uh, on just one of its drugs, um, yeah. you know, neuroleptics in one year. I mean, that's yeah. four billion dollars. Um, so yeah, it unfortunately, as you've heard many times, it always goes back to the money, and um, you know, we we need to realize that's that's a causal point we need to get addressed as well in Congress through mm-hmm. oversight and digging by some of the committees, but. Uh, well, absolutely. Well, John, we have a lot of great people that listen to the show, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of cool people, a lot of former, you know, a lot of veterans that listen to the show. You know, if they're hearing what you're talking about um, and, you know, that you have you know, really moved them with passion today. And I guess if, if they're hearing this and they want to support your mission or they want to connect with you, you know, how would they go about that? Oh, thank you for asking that. Yeah, you're welcome to uh, act- I'll give you my email um, so that you can write me directly. Uh, because I'm interested in passionate folks that want to help. Um, and my email is john, J-O-H-N, dot, Spagnola, I'll give you some help with that, S as in Sam, P as in Peter, A-G as in George, N as in Nancy, O-L-A as in Apple, at, I'm sorry, after John Spagnola, it's a number 10, I almost forgot my own address here, 10, at gmail.com and in that way you can write and you know if i can be of assistance fine if you're interested in helping what i'm doing of course that's very welcome too um again i'm sort of a a lone soldier that's grouping up and uh trying to do the best for you know the greatest good and um i love it nothing's going to stop me so yeah absolutely well as 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 somebody that comes go ahead I would say also you can go to my LinkedIn page, John Spagnola, and it talks about my work and a little bit of what I do if you want to check me out there. Absolutely. Well, somebody that comes from a Navy family, I have a lot of appreciation for, you know, 
um, what our military does and, you know, what they really give up so the rest of us can be free. So we really need to help them out. So, so John Spagnola, thank you so much for hanging out with me today and, you know, really helping get this word out there. Jeremy, thank you. I really appreciate what you do. Please keep up the great work.